What is happening everyone? No Zoop for you here and I have a ship preview for you today. USS West Virginia. It is in my hands along with a couple other battleships but I'm going to review those later and really the USS West Virginia is refreshing because the other battleships that I've been testing right now just really aren't up to snuff in my opinion. The Vanguard and the Dreadnought you know, two ships that are somewhat highly anticipated. Dreadnought has somewhat of an illustrious and very important history to it, but both of them are just kind of 50 shades of meh. I just really did not enjoy them whatsoever. However, USS West Virginia, on the other hand, I have been enjoying immensely. And I know there was a lot of controversy on this battleship. There's been a lot of it. I know I spoke to some of it, and I probably spread some fuel on the fire with it because I was very passionate about this ship. And I was a little upset that we were getting a variant of this ship that we didn't feel we should be getting. However, I'm putting that behind me right now. Last video on it, I said that I was putting it behind me, so I'm really not going to cover any of that controversy. I'm just giving you the preview of USS West Virginia 1941 in its 1941 configuration. This is the version that was sunk at Pearl Harbor and sat there at the bottom until it was lifted and then of course it got its refit. So this variant, the 1941 variant, <laughs> what can I say about it? Wow. Almost heaven indeed. Yes, West Virginia, my mountain mama. This ship is an absolute blast. This tier six battleship is just a lot of fun. So let, let's talk about some statistics of this ship in general. So you've got 50,200 hit points with up to 25 millimeters of armored plating. Your main battery, you've got that Colorado configuration right there. Those 4x2, 406 millimeter shells, 16 inches right there at tier 6. That right there alone is something to get excited about. Your firing range is 16.1 kilometers. Of course, they're not going to give you extreme range with this ship. Maximum HE shell damage. 5,700. Your maximum AP shell damage is 12,400. Reload time, 30 seconds. A little bit anemic, but you know what? It's a low-tier battleship. What do you expect out of it? Maximum speed on your ship is going to be 21 knots. Make sure to slap those Sierra mics on there to make it just ever so much faster, just a scotch faster, because 21 knots feels very slow in any ship. Yeah, you're going to be right at home in a slow battleship in low-tier battles, but still, if you've been playing high tiers and you go back down to the low tiers, you're going to notice how slow this ship is. You really are. It's got slow rudder shift time. Turning circle radius isn't that bad. It's 670 meters. Your detectability on this ship stock is 12.4 kilometers. You can obviously get that lower once you put a captain on there with the concealment expert skill. Consumables you have are damage control party, repair party, and spotting aircraft. This ship is a lot of fun. Really? I have a hard time telling you anything bad about this ship. And really, the worst of this ship is all going to center around its anemic, its sloth-like speed. But again, we knew that was coming. U.S. battleships in the low tiers are just slow in general. They don't start getting fast until you get to the North Carolina, and from that point on, you've got speedy Gonzalez battleships. I mean, well, they're, they're not super fast, but they're still a lot faster than low-tier battleships. Folks, I think we've got something special with this battleship when it comes out. You've got a battleship with some very, very large guns. You're facing off against Tier 5 ships with these guns. And these guns do just absolutely massive damage. Now, one thing to keep in mind with these guns, not quite as accurate as the USS Colorado. Your Sigma is going to be 1.8 on these, where on the Colorado you're looking at more of a 1.9 Sigma. I think that's what it is. I'm pretty sure that's what it is on the Colorado. So 
Your dispersion is a little worse on this ship, and you can tell when you're firing. You can tell. You're you're gonna be in situations where you're gonna fire the ship, and you're gonna see your shots miss over and under and around, and you'll get one that goes through, and that shell that does go through is gonna do absolute massive damage, especially if you're doing it against a tier five or a tier six cruiser. Just be ready for the guns. They hit very, very hard, but the dispersion can be a little wonky. The selling point of this ship, obviously, is the fact that you're getting basically a stock USS Colorado at Tier 6 as opposed to Tier 7. That right there is big. If you like bullying on other ships in a very powerful battleship, this is most likely going to be the battleship for you right here. I dare say that it's a little too powerful for its tier. Time will tell. I really want to see the final version of this ship make it into the game. I'm wondering if they're going to make some tweaks on this ship, though I really hope they don't. I mean, it feels good. It feels very powerful. It's very much an answer to the Giulio Cesare, which is a very powerful Tier 5 ship, which many people thought could have been Tier 6. However, this ship versus the Cesare... Yeah, Chisari doesn't hold its own against this ship. I mean, Tier 5 against Tier 6. And you're going to be facing a lot of Chisaris in this thing. Ships like the Budioni, cruisers really don't stand a chance against USS West Virginia. Really, this is probably one of the strongest low-tier battleships in the game right now. If it makes it in as it is right now. And of course, once again, this ship is in testing. Everything on it is subject to change. Now the way I've got this ship loaded out is I've kind of buffed everything on just keeping this ship afloat and keeping it alive. I've set my captain up so that I've got all the damage control on it and really it has some pretty significant stain power. And that's a good thing though because you've got a lot of of destroyers down at this tier that have really good concealment and they can sneak up on you really fast with some really fast reloading torpedoes. So you want to keep that in mind with this ship. You want to keep that in mind and you want to take all the advantages on just keeping this thing afloat. So if you got your flags on there that decrease the amount of time that you're flooding, just anything to keep this ship healthy. That being said, this ship's pretty easy to keep healthy. It's got pretty good armor. Again, you can turn pretty quickly to get out of the way of these torps as they're incoming, though you're not the fastest in the world. But really, does that matter when you've got 16-inch guns at Tier 6? And that, again, is the big draw on this ship. And I keep saying this, but I keep wanting to drill this in, that these guns are absolutely huge for the tier they are going to be in. And speaking amongst the other community contributors, again, you know, we've got Vanguard right now, and we've got Dreadnought right now, and both of those ships are just really kind of blasé. But the USS West Virginia, on the other hand, I'm going to wrap this up and just tell you right now that throw the controversy aside, throw that aside, I don't know if they're going to give West Virginia 1944 if you purchase this ship. I doubt they will. And after playing this ship, I wouldn't really be upset about that. I wouldn't. This ship, USS West Virginia 1941, stands on its own merits. If you like purchasing premium ships and you collect them, or you just like strong low-tier battleships, this ship is for you. It stands on its own. I think the value for this ship is there. It's powerful. It's got big guns. I don't expect anything else in return for it, even if there is another version of USS West Virginia that is released at some point. And again, you know, I, I said I wasn't going to touch on the controversy, but I am going to touch on the fact that I said a lot of whether or not I was willing to let it die would depend on how this ship came out and how it played and everything else about it. And after playing this ship, yeah, I, I don't know why I was complaining in the first place. I, I feel silly now making such a big deal about the fact that this was not USS West Virginia 1944 because this version of it, this version, the 1941 version, <laughs> I am enjoying the 
ever-loving hell out of it. And I think you all will too. So, at some point in the future, I'll get to my preview of the Vanguard and Dreadnought, though I'm really dreading not reviewing those. Uh, did that come out right? No, I don't think it did, but it doesn't matter. That was an attempt at a clever pun that just absolutely fell flat. No, I'm really not looking forward to previewing those two ships for you because I just am not enjoying them whatsoever. So when it comes time to preview those ships, I'm probably just going to roll both of them up into one preview on both of them because they both are in my opinion, pretty much the same. They're two ships that don't have very good AP, and the HE's really not even that good on them. And yes, I know this is a West Virginia preview, so I'm, I'm going to stop talking about these British ships and just tell you right now that if they don't change this ship, it is going to be a very strong ship. It's going to be a very enjoyable ship. So we will wait to see what comes of this. And of course, there's one more thing to mention. They are offering some unique camouflage and Commander Dusty Roads for this ship, though the camo kind of reminds me of Fall. It's kind of got a very Fall Leaf vibe to it. I don't know that I would purchase it. It's not the most beautiful camo in the world, but I'm sure there's some people out there that love it. Every, every ugly baby has a parent that loves it somewhere, right? So... Uh, take a look at the camo if you get a chance. I think it's on the dev blogs. You should be checking the dev blogs out anyways. Again, guys, USS West Virginia 1941. Hella fun ship. Looking forward to it being released. Thank you for watching this preview. Hope you all are doing wonderful, and I will catch you all later. Zoop out.